Okay, so I promised that in this screencast we would take a look at some examples of the power rule in use, and so that's exactly what we're going to do. Uh, so we're going to play Find That Derivative. And we'll do it for f of x, where f of x is 10x cubed minus 6x squared minus 5 plus 4 over x minus 3 over x squared. And then we'll do it for g of x equals 4x squared plus 2015 minus 4 radical x plus... 6 over radical x. How about that? So, I mean, you could even, if you wanted to, hit the pause button and say, I know how to find these derivatives, I think, and then, then I'll jump in when you're done taking a look. So, okay, assuming you've done that, let's show exactly how this goes. So, I'm subtracting, adding, adding, subtracting. I'm just putting functions together like that. So I'm just going to put their derivatives together in the same way. Now I know the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared times 10. I know the derivative of x squared is 2x to the 1 times 6. I know the derivative of any constant is 0. Then there's this. So the question might well be asked, how do I take the derivative of that thing? And the answer is not very surprising. This is 4x to the negative 1 power. So when I go to take its derivative, the negative 1 comes down in front, and the power decreases by 1. Careful, when negative powers decrease, they get more negative. And Similarly over here, this is 3x to the negative 2. We get a little bit careful here because when this negative 2 comes down in front, there's a negative 3 times that negative 2, and then the power decreases by 1. Similarly, how can we rewrite 4 radical x? Well, that's 4x to the 1 half. And how do we rewrite 6 over radical x? That's 6x to the negative 1 half. And so these are cases where the power rule applies. g prime of x, the derivative of x squared is 2x to the 1 times 4. The derivative of any constant is 0. The 1 half comes down in front. Half of 4 is 2. And the power decreases by 1 and then the negative 1 half comes down in front, multiplies by a positive 6, and the power decreases by 1. Okay, um, for example, find the equation of the tangent line to y equals x cubed minus 6x squared plus x at the point where x equals 2. At the point where x equals 2. And at the point where x equals 2, that's fairly straightforward. I know that's going to be 2 comma something. Turns out that something is negative 14. And so I know the equation of the tangent line is going to be y minus y1 is slope times x minus the x1. I just don't know what the slope is yet. And to find the slope, I'm going to take a derivative. I'm going to find out what y prime is. The derivative of x to the third is 3x to the second minus the derivative of x squared is 2x to the first times 6. And the derivative of any line is its slope. Uh, or you could think about this as x to the first, so that's 1x to the 0 for a derivative, and that's sitting right there. So I want to know what this is when x is 2. And when x is 2, this whole thing is minus 11, and that is the slope, and I get myself the equation of a tangent line. Uh, if you were up for a little practice, uh, these are questions you could try on your own. 
Uh, we could try to find g prime of x if g of x is 4x cubed plus 6x squared minus 12x minus 12. And then over here, we could try to find the equation of the tangent line to y equals x squared minus 8x plus 16 at the point 5, 1. So take a moment, come up with some answers if you can, hit the pause button, make sure you know how to do it. I'll show the answer. I'm not going to stall for long. I'm just not going to stall for long. Okay, here it is. g prime of x is 12x squared plus 12x minus 12. That doesn't simplify, friends. That's as good as it gets. And then over here, we know it's y minus 1 is something times x minus 5. What's that something? Well, the derivative y prime is 2x minus 8. We evaluate that at x equals 5, and we get a slope of 2. Okay, so there you have it, some examples of ways the power rule works. I hope that comes across loud and clear, and I will see you soon. Thanks, everybody.